pretty impressive stop, really. Yeah, he, he really combined that speed and power. That, that was impressive. What a way to start. Unbelievable. And we're straight into, on paper, one of the biggest heats of the round. Obviously, there's a huge crowd on offer to watch Gabriel Medina in the first event. The contest that he won last year and took that uh, momentum right through to the last contest. Wiggly Dantes, he is also in the lineup, a Brazilian who qualified in 2014 and uh, great showing from him on the QS last year and so good to see Dane Reynolds back in a jersey and let's hope he can make good use of this wild card and uh, you know that he just relishes the opportunity to surf against the best guys in the world. Uh, he's a high flying act too, he's very exciting. And we can't forget this man Wiggly Dantes, he's had the opportunity to compete in a championship tour event before that was in Fiji last year. Let's see what he can do on his back end though. Drives off the bottom, surfs with a lot of speed, and just winds out another little carve. Just a transition move to get to this. The steep pocket on the inside. Throws his board vertically a couple of times there. So a good start for Wiggly Dantes. Gabriel Medina chasing him down the line now. And this is the, uh, the backhand attack that changed everything. Of course, this event had been dominated by natural footers for a long time, but Gabriel so sharp and just able to transition beautifully onto that cascading lip. Jeez, I thought I was watching the finals from uh, last year. That was uh, remarkably just like the wave that got on that score to win the final. But Gabriel Medina, he, he really uh, has that great knack for staying behind the section and getting a lot of those lip climbs, which uh, the turns the heads of the judges. They, they love it when you're in that critical part of the wave. Seems like Medina's, uh, sorry, his game plan hasn't changed too much either, not going all the way to the takeoff zone to get this right. I think, you know, it just, everything gets thrown out the, the window in terms of when you see that long line growing down the sandbar, you got to turn around and go. That's just all there is to it. But look at those late climbs, you know, you, you think about Mick Fanning and Lassie, how he threw those crazy carves, very different type of surfing right here. And the Irons is one of the best in the business at it back in the day. And uh, Gabriel, he knows that you know, these fast, exciting, critical sections to do those lip climbs are not the most difficult maneuver in the world to do, but they get big points. The, uh, the opening score is very strong. We had a 7.83 for Gabriel, but the judges really liked Wiggly Dantes' first ride an 8. Speed and all that spray that gets hucked out the back. Well, here we go. This is Wiggly up once again. He wants to find a backup early, smart decision, and he climbs up onto the roof of this wave, lands and just throws his board, drifts the tail a little, the wave not standing up how we uh, really would have liked on that section. But he's just going to work this one over, as I mentioned. Just wants to get a backup score on the board. And chasing him down the line on another inside runner is Medina. Wave number three for Gabriel. <laughs> Dane Reynolds, he could be possibly the exact opposite of these two Brazilians. You know, they're so feisty. They want to get their scores on the board now. They are competitive beasts. And then you have Dane Reynolds, who's sort of chill. He's more of an artsy surfer. He's out the back sitting there waiting for a set to come his way. It's, it's great to see the dynamics. Oh, is he going to commit to competing? So it's great to have him here. It sure is. Well, Medina swooping on an insider once again, and he just gets that board vertically so well. Even when these waves flatten out, Medina has the ability to just turn it into something, and he just drives off the bottom looking so fit and brings it right through to the inside. A couple of little lip line floaters, but there is a huge finish from Gabriel. That was a, uh, a great sort of punctuation mark on the end of a, a, a ride that didn't seem to be cooperating for a lot of the, uh, the way down the line. Uh, Dolphins paying a visit to the lineup. These are the true locals, Ronnie, but yeah, I'm with you. You know, it, again, Gabriel seems to love, and he has a knack to find those growers that uh, really build in height down the line. Uh, I don't know what it is, but he's really tuned in out here on the bank at Snapper Rocks. And look at this wave, he found another one. Nice little snap there. Again, 12 o'clock. Got a little hung up there. The judges will take note of that. Uh, but he backs it up well right there, showing perfect timing, not wasting any energy between turns. Really timing that bottom turn. And then the end, that wave gets kind of fast. And before he finishes it off with one really powerful 12 o'clock turn again. So again, he's really relying on that, that backside whip. He's so good at, at leaving that lasting impression on the judges with that end section maneuver. Season, he took the first event win and obviously went on to be our world champion. And he is reminding us of that right now in his heat. He sure is. And just starting with a huge backhand jam and moving down the line. This wave standing up now. Medina, oh my goodness, inverted. Backside reverse, throwing the fins. 
Well, you could almost class it as an aerial, and he's not done. He brings it right through to the inside now, setting up once again for something big and just destroys that just feathering end section. But how, how inverted was that manoeuvre? I think the scary thing about Medina for me, he's actually a better surfer now than he was when he won this event. 12 months ago. I would agree. You know, we were asking him in the Dawn Patrol show, like, how, do you, how does someone improve after you just won the world title? As we see a replay here of Dane Reynolds, nice little high line floater there. Dug a, just a little bit of a rail in that bottom turn, bottom turn. That may have chafed him a little bit. Got his timing off a little there and uh, dug a rail and actually had to kick out of that one. But in front of him, Gabriel Medina, big tail blow there going reverse. Backs it up with that vertical attack again. And that maneuver right there, that just shows you that next level, that gear that Gabriel's capable of. A lot of us talk about the John Johns and the Julians, and, and we get really hung up on how progressive their surfing is. The world champ, he's right there with them. And we have the most exciting wild card that you'll ever come across. Dane Reynolds up and riding at this stage of the game. He drives off the bottom, just drifts the fins, doesn't ride out of that maneuver. The 29-year-old from Ventura is in a spot of bother out here at the moment chasing a two-wave total as Gabriel Medina just continues to work. He's had a number of rides. That was ride number eight. Wiggly Dantes with an opportunity to steal the lead. He needs an 8.64 and he absolutely destroys that last section. Winding out a carve and just squeezing in a little backhand float to finish. Wow, that was really impressive, Ronnie. I, I, he's got that 12 o'clock fire hose out. You saw how much spray he chucked out the back. Man, uh, you know, Gabriel Medina has got a, a lead right now, but Wiggly need an 8.64. I'll tell you what, that's kind of in the ballpark. Yeah, that's right there. And you're going to see, watch how he times his bottom turn. That was a ton of power right there. A lot of snapping right there. That was so speedy. And then one more closeout maneuver. So, you know, I'm not sure it's going to be there with the 8.64, but Wiggly is ripping. He's definitely bringing it to Wiggly. I mean, to, uh, sorry, to, to Gabriel. And then... Picking up right where uh, where he left off here, Dane Reynolds, just not in sync. You can see a little sluggish there. He wants this wave to stand up tall for him. It's really fat, not really uh, hitting that bank the way he wanted to. So, you know, he's basically gave himself a 10-minute heat. He needs to find two big scores. And Gabriel Medina, again, that backside vertical attack. That wave fizzling out, didn't have that low runner that he likes. And uh, he's still searching to get rid of that. Oh, what does he have? A 7.83. Well, here we go, Dane Reynolds. Let's see if he can get himself out of that situation of chasing two waves with this ride. Nice, big, powerful arc. His surfing is so raw. Drifts the tail on the second move, racing down the line now and floating to stay with it. The green face and just falls, trying to keep up with that wave. But Dane Reynolds, that will probably be his best ride. It was his third wave. And so far, he hasn't been able to do better than a 3.17. So I think uh, that'll, that'll be his best. I think sometimes in this situation where you see a guy chasing two scores. But I might even beg to differ there a little bit. You know, I, I really liked that nose pick that Gabriel did. I thought that was one of the most exciting maneuvers we've seen. But look how much speed he has. That was a ton of power in that whip. And then that vertical snap there. That spray literally went 15 feet in the air. And that second turn was unbelievable. I'm so stoked that the judges threw that 8.93, uh, you know, it was a little bit of a short wave, so I was worried maybe the, the numbers will be low. Of Wiggly Dantes and, and that upcoming clan of Brazilian talent, they really do believe that they can beat the best surfers in the world. So Medina has really uh, made some enemies for himself in that regard. But Dane Reynolds kicking out of another ride there and chasing him down the line is the current world champion driving off the bottom. Bang, beautiful transition turn. Tags it again and brings it right through. Oof to the Little Marley section of the bank here at Snapper Rocks with a solid finish. And he was looking for an 8.14. Did he get the score, Ross? This is really fun to watch here. This is a slug fest between Gabriel and Wiggly. I love that they're so similar. You get to really pick it apart. I'm, I'm thinking, yes, Ronnie, I, I think that's going to be an excellent score. He needs the 8.14. It's right there in the neighborhood. Again, look at this kid's uh, wave knowledge. He keeps picking off these growers. And what I mean by that, watch how this wave builds in size as it hits the sandbar. Uh, you know, those are the waves that the locals look for. Joel, Mick, you know, they want those runners that allow you to string together five or six big maneuvers. That's when you can break into that nine point range. And guess what? Gabriel's right back in this thing. And Wiggly just swoops into this one. It's a beautiful looking wave, drives off the bottom. Huge hit, a lot of spray coming off the rail of his board. 
and he is just competing with no nerves at this stage of the game. He's hoping for this wave to stand up on the inside, just grinds through a nice little backside cut back there and the wave standing up and he absolutely explodes on the end section. He needs, uh, he needs to get himself a decent number, you think. We're still waiting on that score to come through for Medina. But Wiggly, he's not making any mistakes when he's no. getting these opportunities. Uh, he, you know, oof, he, he's kind of almost uh, displaying the most power, I would think, in this heat. He looks so strong on those backside whips. Uh, it's very impressive. So, you know, we're just assuming that Gabriel is going to get the score. The judge is still deliberating, watching some replays of Gabriel Medina. Uh, so I'm there with you. I think he knows he has urgency in this wave. I'm a little bit concerned in this wave. He fe fell asleep just a little bit. You don't want to give the judges a reason to uh, score you low. And right here, the wave got a little fat. So it's not too much his fault. But he caps it off right here with a nice vertical snap. But again, all his waves, if you're going to criticize it, they were a little on the short side. They, you know, he could have used maybe one or two more maneuvers. But again, this kid combining the perfect concoction of speed and power. 25 years of age. I think we uh, should get another look at Gabriel Medina's last ride because that's going to be the comparison. Gabe had a wave that reeled down the line beautifully and it actually allowed him to get vertical, but he, there was no dead spots in this wave once it started gr sticking to the bank on the inside. Oh, perfect turn right there. Hit the button through a lot of speed. Then it looked like he was going to fall back into, back into that lip climbing mode, but he got one more big maneuver on the, on the inside just to mix it up a little bit. You saw that last maneuver, the tail slid, so it wasn't quite as repetitive as the other waves. This wave total requirement is 18.31, and uh, he's out of this heat, but he might give us some fireworks here. He drives off the bottom and just loses his footing on that maneuver. So the heat comes to a close, and a typically gutsy performance from Gabriel Medina, who was so busy in the earlier stages, Ross, but uh, sort of got a little bit more selective towards the end. Wiggly can come out of this heat, even though he didn't win, with a ton of confidence. That was a slugfest between him and Gabriel. And geez, oh, the world champ, business as usual. So he didn't get ruffled, did he? It looked like maybe he had every chance to, you know, show pressure and buckle, and he didn't. So solid under pressure as he was at the final event, the Pipe Masters last year, where he finished second after claiming the world title. We're going to a quick break. When we come back, another big heat for you in the first round. Don't go anywhere.